This goes through the if statement examples step by step and shows you how they work. All right, to begin with, we have our code right over here in this window. We have what the each variable is equal to over here on the right, and the final output is down here in the bottom of the screen. Now, right now, the computer is just about to look at this first line. I'm going to step over that. We've created a variable called a. The rest of the variables haven't been created yet, and we set it equal to 4. I'm going to step over. Now, variables a, b, and c have been set to 4, 5, and 6 based upon these lines of code. We're now here looking at the if statement, and we're going to go see if a is less than b, in this case, if 4 is less than 5. That evaluates to true, so the computer goes ahead and gets ready to print a is less than b. I'm going to step over that, and we can see down here at the bottom, it has printed out a is less than b. Now, is a greater than b? Well, a is 4, b is 5, so I don't expect that to occur. And when I step, I can see that my current line of execution, which is right here, will skip over the print statement, and it will not run that print statement because A is not greater than B. Now, let's see. Is A less than or equal to B? Well, that is true. So when I step, I will go ahead and run that print statement. A is less than or equal to B. The next statement, is A greater than or equal to B? Well, that's not true. So I'm going to skip right over that print statement. Okay, is A equal to B? Not true. So I skip right over the print statement is a not equal. Remember, pound equals, that symbol stands for not equal. In this case, a and b are not equal to each other. 4 and 5 aren't equal, so I print out a and b are not equal. You can see down here. All right, I'm going to use the a and. Is a less than b and a less than c? In this case, a, which is 4, is less than both b and c. So we go ahead and print a is less than b and c. Do note that I have to put if a is less than b and a is less than c. I cannot do if a is less than b and less than c. I have to restate that a right there. A non-exclusive or is a less than b or a less than c. It is, so I go ahead and print that out. Okay, this is kind of weird, but I can set a, which right now is equal to 4, equal to a true-false value. So I'm stepping over that. In this case, you have to do true with a capital T. You can't use it with a lowercase t. So a is now equal to true. It is no longer equal to 4. I'm going to do an if statement. If a. So is a true? If it is, it will go ahead and print that out. I can also use a function called not. It will turn any true to false and any false to true. It will basically flip a true-false value. So if not a, that's not the case. So I skip over that. If A was false, it would have turned the false to true, and that statement would have run. Okay, let's go ahead and set A to true, which it already was. B to false, so it's no longer equal to 5. Now, I can do if A and B. So if A is true and B is true, we're going to run this statement. Now, I can see over here, A is true, but B is not true. So I do not expect this to run, because they would both have to be true. And indeed, skips it over. Okay, reassigning A to 3 and b to 3 up here. I'm now going to run this next statement, which looks very strange, but taken part by part, I'm asking, is a equal to b? Well, in this case, a is equal to b. 3 is equal to 3, so that will evaluate to true, and what is stored in c is the value of true. And I can now print out c, and true prints out down below. All right. It's also legal to use numbers, very strange. I do not recommend it, but you should be aware of that. If 1, well, basically right here, if this evaluates to anything but 0, the computer will consider it to be true. So 1 is not 0, so we went ahead and we printed out 1. A, that's not 0, so we're going ahead and we're printing out A. And... Oops, looks like I skipped over here. Um, zero, it will not print this out because if it's zero, it won't run it. Anything else, it'll go ahead and evaluate the if statement. Okay, comparing variables to multiple values. Um, this is kind of strange. It will actually run, but it does not do at all what we want. The weird thing is this appears to work. A is equal to C. Okay, up here, A is equal to C. If A is equal to B, uppercase or lowercase, then I'm going to go ahead and print this out. Oh, look. It went ahead and printed it out. A is equal to B. Maybe. 
The reason why this evaluates to true is that I have done A is equal to B or B. Remember, anything that's not 0 evaluates into true. So B is not 0, so the computer considers it to be true, and therefore that statement goes ahead and runs. What I actually wanted to do is write down here, if A is equal to B or A is equal to B, lowercase, that is the correct statement. In that case, this is false, this is false, and that statement will not run. This is a easy to make mistake, especially since the computer doesn't give you an error. It just doesn't run the way expect you expect it to. Okay, simple if statement using input. This takes input from the user. What is the temperature in Fahrenheit? This right here converts it to an integer, and we store it in temperature. So if I run this line down here, what is the temperature in Fahrenheit? I'll call it 95 degrees. I can see 95 is now stored inside of temperature. And is 95 greater than 90? It is. So it runs and it prints out it is hot outside. And it prints out done next. It will always print out done. All right, let's use the else statement here. What is the temperature in Fahrenheit? Let's call it 0. So I can see temperature is now 0. And is 0 greater than 90? It's not. So in this case, the execution jumps to the else. So if it's not greater than 90, else, I'm going to print out it is not hot outside. And I'll go ahead and print out done. This is an else if statement chained together. So in this case, I can run and ask for what the temperature is. I'm going to say that it is 50 degrees. 50 is now stored in temperature over here. And is 50 greater than 90? It's not. Step over. Is 50 less than 30? It's not. So I'm going to pick the end case. If it's not any of these, I'm going to use this else. And I'm going to print, it's not hot outside. But I won't print that it's cold or that it's hot. OK, ordering of if statements is very important. We've talked about this before in class. What is the temperature in Fahrenheit? OK, I'm going to say the temperature right now is 500. It is blistering hot outside. Everything's catching on fire. So is 500 greater than 90? It is. So I'm going to print it's hot outside. Note, I do not check this statement right here. Once this statement evaluates to true, this else if will not be checked. So. Stepping over, I print out it's hot outside. I do not print, oh man, you could print, fry, you could fry eggs on the statement. There, you could fry eggs on the pavement. I do not print that out. So really what I needed to do is do the 110 first and then the 90. You can also compare strings. What is your name? I'm going to enter Paul. And for reasons I do not know, while I run the debugger, it gives me this error. It's still running. And because username is equal to Paul, it prints you have a nice name. And then we're done. So ignore this little part. You can also compare strings just like this. you got to make sure you put double quotes around this text to compare it. And pass that. It works just fine.